Loughborough Students' Union Shakespeare Society presents Dr Faustus by Christopher Marlowe. Adapted and directed by Casper Wart and Paul Thompson. Produced by Jessica Norris. The form of Faustus's fortunes, good or bad. To patient judgments we appeal our plaud, and speak for Faustus in her infancy. Now she is born, her parents' base of stock, in Germany, within a town called Rhodes. Of riper years to Wittenberg she went, whereas her kinsmen chiefly brought her up. So soon she profits in divinity, the fruitful plot of scholarism graced, that shortly she was graced with doctor's name excelling all, whose sweet delight disputes in heavenly matters of theology, till, swollen with cunning of a self-conceit, her waxen wings did mount above her reach, and melting heavens conspired her overthrow, for falling to a devilish exercise, and glutted more with learning's golden gifts, she fits upon cursed necromancy. Nothing so sweet as magic is to her, which she prefers before her chiefest bliss, and this the one that in her study sits. Set all thy studies, Faustus, and begin, to sound the depths of thou that will profess. Having commenced, be a divine in show, yet level at the end of every art, and live and die in Aristotle's works. Sweet analytics, is thou that has ravished me. To argue well is the goal of logic, is to dispute well logic's chiefest end. Affords this art no greater miracle? Then read no more. Thou hast attained the end. A greater subject fitteth the Faust's wit. When all is done, divinity is best. Jerome's Bible, Faustus, view it well. The reward of sin is death. Oh, that's hard. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and there's no truth in us. Why then be like we must sin? And so consequently die? Ay, we must die an everlasting death. <laughs> what doctrine calls you this? Case or ask ra? What will be will be divinity adieu. These metaphysics of magicians and necromantic books are heavenly. Lines, circles, schemes, letters and characters. Ay, these are those that Faustus most desires. What a world of profit and delight, of power, of honour, of omnipotence is promised to the studious artisan. All things that move between the quiet poles shall be at my command. Emperors and kings are but obeyed in their several provinces, nor can they raise the wind or rend the clouds. But his dominion that exceeds in this stretches as far as doth the mind of man. A sound magician is a mighty god. Here, Faustus, try thy brains to gain a deity. Ah, Wagner. Commend me to my dearest friend, the German Valdes and Cornelius. Request them earnestly to visit me. I will, ma'am. Oh, Faustus, lay that damned book aside, and gaze not on it, lest it tempt thy soul, and heap God's heavy wrath upon thy head. Read, read the scriptures. That is blasphemy. Go forward, Faustus, in that famous art, wherein all nature's treasury is contained. Be thou on earth as Jove is in the sky, lord and commander of these elements. How I am glutted with conceit of this! Shall I make spirits fetch me what I please, resolve me of all ambiguities, perform what desperate enterprises I will? I'll have them read me strange philosophy, and tell the secrets of all foreign kings. I'll have them wall all Germany with brass, and make swift Rhine circle fair Wittenberg. I'll have them fill the public schools with silk, where with the students shall be bravely clad, and I'll levy soldiers with the coin they bring, and chase the Prince of Palma from our land, and reign sole queen of all provinces. Yeah, 
Stranger engines from the brunt of war than the fiery keel at Antwerp's bridge. I'll make my servile spirits to invent. Come, German Valdis and Cornelius, and make me blessed with your sage conference. Valdes, sweet Valdes and Cornelius, know that your words have won me at the last to practice magic in concealed arts. Yet not your words only, but mine own fantasy, that will receive no object for my head, but ruminates on necromantic skill. Philosophy is odious and obscure. Both law and physic are for petty wits. Divinity is basis of the three. Unpleasant, harsh, contemptible and vile. Tis magic, magic that hath ravished me. Then gentle friends aid me in this attempt, and I, that have with the concise syllogalisms graveled the pastors of the German church, and made the flowering pride of Wittenberg swarm to my problems, as the infernal spirits on sweet Musea when he came to hell, will be as cunning as Agrippa was, whose shadows made all Europe honour him. Faustus, these books, thy wit, and our experience, shall make all nations to canonise us, as pampered dogs obey their noble lords, so shall the spirits of every element be serviceable to us three. Like lions shall they guard us when we please, like Almain rutters with their horsemen's staves, or Lapland giants trotting by our sides, sometimes like women or unwedded maids, shadowing more beauty in their airy brows than in the white breasts of the Queen of Love. From Venice shall they drag huge Argoses, and from America the golden fleece that yearly stuffs old Philip's treasury if learned Faustus will be resolute. Valdes, as resolute am I in this as thou to live. Therefore object it not. The miracles that magic will perform will make thee vow to study nothing else. He that is grounded in astrology, enriched with tongues, well seen in minerals, hath all the principles magic doth require. Then doubt not, Faustus, but to be renowned and more frequented for this mystery than heretofore the Delphian oracle. The spirits tell me they can dry the sea and fetch the treasure of all foreign wrecks. I, all the wealth that our forefathers hid within the massy entrails of the earth. Then tell me, Faustus, what shall we three want? Nothing, Cornelius. Oh, this cheers my soul. Come show me some demonstrations magical that I may conjure in some lusty grove and have all these joys in full possession. Then haste thee to some solitary grove and bear wise bacons and Abanus's words the Hebrew Psalter and New Testament, and whatsoever else is requisite. We will inform thee, ere our conference cease. Valdes, first let her know the words of art, and then, all other ceremonies learned, Faustus may try her cunning by herself. First, I'll instruct thee in the rudiments, and then wilt thou be perfect to thine eye. Then come and dine with me, and after meat will canvas every quiddity thereof. For ere I'll sleep, I'll try what I can do. This night I'll conjure, though I do die, therefore. I wonder what's become of Faustus, that was wont to make our schools ring with so it is. That we shall know, for see, here comes her boy. How now, sirrah? Where's thy mistress? God in heaven knows. Why, dost not thou know? Oh well, yes, I know, but that follows not. Go to, sirrah, leave your jesting and tell us where she ah, is. That follows not necessary by force of argument, that you being licentious, to stand upon it. Therefore acknowledge your error, and be attentive. Why didst thou not say thou nurse? Have you any witness on it? Yes, sirrah, I heard you. Ask my fellow if I be a thief. Well, you will not tell us. Yes, ma'am, I will tell you. And yet, if you were not dunces, you would never ask me such a question. For is she not a free woman? Is not that mobile? Then wherefore should you ask me such a question? But that I am by nature phlegmatic, slow to wrath, and prone to luxury, to love, I would say. It were not for you to come within forty foot of the place of execution, although I do not doubt to see you both hanged for the next sessions. Thus, having triumphed over you, I will set my countenance like a precision, and begin to speak thus. Truly, my dear brethren, my mistress is within at dinner with Valdez and Cornelius, as this wine, if it could speak it would inform your worships. And so the Lord bless you, preserve you, and keep you, my dear brethren. My dear brethren, adieu. Nay, then, I fear she has fallen into that damned art for which they two are infamous throughout the world. Were she a stranger and not allied to me, yet 
should I grieve for her? But come, let us go and inform the rector, and see if he by his grave counsel can reclaim her. Aye, but I fear me nothing can reclaim her. Yet, let us try what we can do. Faustus, begin thine incantations, and try if devils will obey thy command, seeing thou hast prayed and sacrificed to them. Within this circle is Jehovah's name, forwards and backwards anagrammatized. The breathed names of holy saints, figures of every adjunct of the heavens, and characters of signs and erring stars, by which the spirits are enforced to rise. Then fear not, Faustus, but be resolute, and try the uttermost magic can perform. Sint may hide de acronis propertai, valiet numcum triplex Jehovah, Ignite area, terrani, acritai, spirita salve. Orientis principal bells above, inferni adantis monica. Et demagogon, popitimus vos, et aperit et surget Mephistopheles. Quitting moras, for Jehovah, Gnorum, et consecrum aquum conduct spargo, sicrium crucio conduct facio. Epin vota nostra. Ipsi nux sage nobet dictus Mephistopheles. Such is the force of magic and my spells. Now, Faustus, thou art conjurer laureate. Thou can command great Mephistopheles. Conredius, Mephistopheles, for art is imagine. Now, Faustus. What wouldst thou have me do? I charge thee to wait upon me whilst I live, to do whatever Faustus shall command, be it to make the moon drop from her sphere, or the ocean to overwhelm the world. I am a servant to great Lucifer, and may not follow thee without his leave. No more than he commands must we perform. Did he not charge thee to appear to me? No. I came now hither of mine own accord. Did not my conjuring speeches raise thee? Speak! That was the cause, but yet only in appearance. For when we hear one rack the name of God, abjure the scriptures and his saviour Christ, we fly in hope to get his glorious soul. Nor will we come unless he use such means whereby he is in danger to be damned. Therefore, the shortest cut for conjuring is stoutly to abjure the trinity and pray devoutly to the prince of hell. So Faustus hath already done, and holds this principle. There is no chief but only Beelzebub, to whom Faustus doth dedicate herself. This word damnation terrifies her not, for she confounds hell and Elysium. Her ghost be with the old philosophers, believing these vain trifles of men's souls. Tell me, what is that, Lucifer, thy lord? Arch-regent and commander of all spirits. Was not that Lucifer an angel once? Yes, Faustus, and most dearly loved of God. How comes it, then, that he is prince of devils? Oh, by aspiring pride and insolence, for which God threw him from the face of heaven. And what are you that live with Lucifer? Unhappy spirits that fell with Lucifer conspired against our God with Lucifer, and are forever damned with Lucifer. Where are you damned? In hell. How comes it then that thou art out of hell? Why, this is hell, nor am I out of it. Thinkst thou that I, who saw the face of God and tasted the eternal joys of heaven, am not tormented with ten thousand hells in being deprived of everlasting bliss? O oh, Faustus, leave these frivolous demands, which strike terror to my fainting soul. What? Is great Mephistopheles so passionate for being deprived of the joys of heaven? Learn thou of Faustus's manly fortitude, and scorn these joys that thou shall never possess. Go bear these tidings to great Lucifer. 
seeing Faustus have incurred eternal death by desperate thoughts against Jove's deity. Say, she surrenders up to him her soul, so he will spare her four and twenty years, letting her live in all voluptuousness, having thee ever to attend on me, to give me whatsoever I shall ask, to tell me whatsoever I demand, and slay mine enemies and aid my friends, and always be obedient to my will. Go! and return to mighty Lucifer, and meet me in my study at midnight, and then resolve me of thy master's mind. I will, Faustus. Had I as many souls as there be stars, I'd give them all for Mephistopheles. By him, I'll be great empress of the world, and make a bridge through the moving air to pass the ocean with a band of men. I'll join the hills that bind the Afric shore and make the land a continent to Spain, and both contributory to my crown. The emperor shall not live but by my leave, nor any potentate of Germany. Now that I have obtained what I desire, I'll live in speculation of this art till Mephistopheles return again. Sarah boy, come hither. How? Boy? Zunes, boy in your face. I hope you have seen many boys with such picadevens as I have. Boy, <laughs> quotha. Tell me, Sarah, hast thou any comings in? Aye, and goings out too. You may see else. Yeah. Alas, poor slave, see how poverty gesteth in his nakedness. The villain is bare and out of service, and so hungry that I know he would give his soul to the devil for a shoulder of mutton, though it were blood raw. <laughs> How? My soul to the devil for a shoulder of mutton, though to a blood raw? <laughs> Not so, good friend. By Our Lady, I had need have it well roasted, Ooh, and good sauce to it, if I pay so dear. Well, wilt thou serve me, and I'll make thee my pupil. How? In verse? No, sir. Beaten silk and stave acre. How now? Knave's acre? Aye, I thought that was all the land his father left him. Do you hear? I would be sorry to rob you of your living. Sir, I say in stave acre. Oh ho, ho, ho. Stave's acre. Um, why then be like? If I were your man, I should be full of vermin. So thou shalt, whether thou bewitch me or no. But, Sirrah, leave your jesting, and bind yourself presently unto me for seven years, or I'll turn all the lice about thee into familiars, and they shall tear thee in pieces. <laughs> Do you hear, sir? You may save that labour. They are too familiar with me already. Zooms, they are as bold with my flesh as if they had paid for my meat and drink. Well, do you hear, sir? Hold! Take these gilders. Ooh, gridirons. What be they? Why, French crowns. Moss! But for the name of French crowns, a man who as good have as many English counters. And what should I do with these? Why, now, sir, thou art uh, an hour's warning, whensoever or wheresoever, the devil shall fetch thee. No, no. Here, take your gridirons again. Truly, I'll not of them. Oh, truly, but you shall. Bear witness, I gave them him. Bear witness, I gave them you again. Well, I will cause two devils presently to fetch thee away. Balliol and Belcher! Oh, let your Balliol and your Belcher come here, and I'll knock them. They were never so knocked since they were devils. Say I should kill one of them. What would Fox say? Do ye see yonder tall fellow in the round slop? He has killed the devil. So, I shall be called Kill Devil all the parish over. Bail! <laughs> 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 Voucher! Spirits! Away! <laughs> 
God! Are they gone? <clears throat> a vengeance on them! They have long, vile nails! There was a he-devil! And a she-devil! <clears throat> I'll tell you how you shall know them. All he-devils has horns, and all she-devils has clefts and cloven feet. Hmm. Well, sir, follow me. But, do you hear? If I should serve you, would you teach me, Teresa Banios and Belchios? I'll teach thee to turn thyself to anything. Or to a dog, or a cat, or a mouse, or a rat, or anything. How? A Christian fellow? To a dog, or a cat, or a mouse, or a rat? <laughs> no, no, sir. If you turn me into anything, let it be in the likeness of a pretty frisking flea, that I may be here and there and everywhere. Ooh, I'll tickle the pretty wench's plackets. <laughs> I'll be amongst them, I faith. Well, sir, come. But do you hear, Wagner? Balio! Belcher! Oh, oh, Lord, I, I play, sir. Let Banio and Belcher go sleep. Villain, call me Master Wagner, and mm. let thy left eye be diametrically fixed upon my right heel, with quasi vestigious nostros insistere. Oh, uh, oh, God forgive me, he speaks Dutch Fustian. Well, I'll follow him. I'll serve him. That's flat. Now, Faustus, thou must needs be damned, and canst thou not be saved? What boots it then to think of God or heaven, away with such vain fancies and despair? Despair in God and trust in Beelzebub. No, go not backwards, no. Faustus, be resolute. Why waverest thou? Oh, something soundeth in mine ears. Abjure this magic, turn to God again. Aye, and Faustus will turn to God again. To God? He loves thee not. The God thou servest is thine own appetite, wherein is fixed the love Beelzebub. To him I'll build an altar and a church and offer lukewarm blood of newborn babes. Sweet Faustus, leave that execrable art. Contrition, prayer, repentance, what of them? Oh, they are means to bring thee unto heaven. Rather illusions, fruits of lunacy, that makes men foolish that do trust them most. Sweet Faustus, think of heaven and heavenly things. No, Faustus, think of honor and of wealth, 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 of wealth. Why, the senior of Endem shall be mine when Mephistopheles stand by me. What oh, God can hurt thee, Faustus? Thou art safe. Cast no more doubts. Come, Mephistopheles, and bring glad tidings from the great Lucifer. Is it not midnight? Come, Mephistopheles. Vinny, Vinny, Mephistopheles. <laughs> now tell me, what says Lucifer thy lord? That I shall wait on Faustus while she lives. So she will buy my service with her soul. Already Faustus hath hazard that for thee. But, Faustus, thou must bequeath it solemnly, and write a deed of gift with thine own blood, for that security craves great Lucifer. If thou deny it, I will back to hell. Stay, Mephistopheles, and, and tell me, what good will my soul do thy lord? Enlarge his kingdom. Is that the reason he tempts us thus? Or for those who are unhappy, it is comfort to have had company in misfortune. Have you any pain that tortures others? As great as have the human souls of men. But tell me, Faustus, shall I have thy soul? And I will be thy slave and wait on thee, and give thee more than thou hast wit to ask. Aye. Mephistopheles, I give it thee. Then stab thine arm courageously, and bind thy soul, that at some certain day great Lucifer may claim it as his own, and then thou be as great as Lucifer. Lo, Mephistopheles, for love of thee I cut mine arm, and with my proper blood assure my soul to be great Lucifer's chief lord and regent of perpetual night. 
view here the blood that trickles from mine arm, and let it be propitious for my wish. But, Faustus, thou must write it in a manner of a deed of gift. Aye, so I will. But, Mephistopheles, my blood congeals, and I can write no more. I'll fetch thee fire to dissolve it straight. What might the staying of my blood pretend? Is it unwilling I should write this bill? Why streams it not that I might write afresh? Faustus gives to thee her soul. Ah, there it stayed. Why should thou not? Is not thy soul th thine own? Then write it again. Faustus gives to thee her soul. Here's fire. Come, Faustus, set it on. So now the blood begins to clear again. Now will I make an end immediately. Oh, what will not I do to obtain her soul? It is done. This bill is ended. And Faustus hath bequeathed her soul to Lucifer. But what is this inscription on mine arm? Man flies. Whither should I fly? If unto God he'll throw thee down to hell. My senses are deceived. Here's nothing writ. I see it plain. Here in this place is writ. Man flies. Yet shall not Faustus fly? I'll fetch her somewhat to delight her mind. Speak, Mephistopheles, what means this show? Nothing, Faustus, but to delight thy mind withal, and to show thee what magic can perform. But may I raise up spirits when I please? Ay, Faustus, and do greater things than these. Then there's enough for a thousand souls. Here, Mephistopheles, receive this scroll, a deed of gift of body and of soul, but yet conditionally, that thou perform all articles prescribed between us. Faustus, I swear by hell and Lucifer to effect all promises between us made. Then hear me read them, on these conditions following. First, that Faustus may be a spirit in form and substance. Secondly, that Mephistopheles shall be her servant and at her command. Thirdly, that Mephistopheles should do for her and bring her whatsoever. Fourthly, that he shall be in her chamber or house invisible. Lastly, that he shall appear to the said Jane Faustus at all times, in what form or shape soever she pleases. I, Jane Faustus of Wittenberg, doctor, by these presents do give both body and soul to Lucifer, Prince of the East, and his minister Mephistopheles, and furthermore grant unto them that, four and twenty years being expired, the articles above written inviolate. Full power to fetch or carry the said Jane Faustus, body and soul, flesh, blood or goods, into their habitation whatsoever. By me, Jane Faustus. Now speak, Faustus, do you deliver this as your deed? I take it, and the devil give thee good unto it. Now, Faustus, ask what thou wilt. First will I question thee about hell. Tell me, where is the place that men call hell? Under the heavens. Aye, but whereabouts? Within the bowels of these elements where we are tortured and remain forever. Hell hath no limits, nor is circumscribed in one self place. For where we are is hell, and where hell is must we ever be. And to conclude, when all the world dissolves and every creature shall be purified, all places shall be hell that is not heaven. I come, I think hell's a fable. I think so still to experience change thy mind. Why? Thinkest thou then that Faustus shall be damned? Ay, of necessity. For here's the scroll wherein thou hast given thy soul to Lucifer. Ay, and body too. But what of that? Thinkest thou that Faustus is so fond to imagine that after this life there is any pain? <laughs> Tush, these are trifles and mere old wives' tales. But Faustus... I am an instance to prove the contrary, for I am damned, and am now in hell. How now in hell? Nay, and this be hell, I'll willingly be damned here. What, walking, disputing, and so on? But leaving off this, let me have a husband, the fairest man in Germany, 
for I am wanton and lusty, and cannot live without a husband. How, a husband? I prithee, Faustus, talk not of a husband. Nay, sweet Mephistopheles, fetch me one, for I will have one. Well, thou wilt have one. Sit there till I come. I'll fetch thee a husband, in the devil's name. Tell, Faustus, how dost thou like thy spouse? I'll plague on him for a hot whore. Tut, Faustus, marriage is but a ceremonial toy. If thou lovest me, think no more of it. I'll call thee out the fairest courtesans, and bring them every morning to thy bed. He whom thine eyes shall like, thy heart shall have. Be he as chaste as was Penelope, as wise as Saba, or as beautiful as was bright Lucifer before his fall. Hold, take this book, peruse it thoroughly. The iterating of these lines brings gold. The framing of this circle on the ground brings whirlwinds, tempests, thunder and lightning. Pronounce this thrice devoutly to thyself, and men in armour shall appear to thee, ready to execute what thou desirest. Thanks, Mephistopheles. Yet fain would I have a book wherein I might behold all spells and incantations, that I might raise up spirits when I please. Oh, here they are in this book. Now would I have a book where I might see all characters and planets of the heavens, that I might know their motions and dispositions. Oh, here they are too. Nay, let me have one book more, and then I have done, wherein I might see all plants, herbs and trees that grow upon the earth. Here they be. <laughs> oh, thou art deceived. Tut, I warrant thee. <laughs> what? Dick, look to the horses there till I come again. I have gotten one of Dr. Faustus's conjuring books. And now we'll have such knavery as passes. What? Robin, you must come away and walk the horses. I walk the horses? I scorn it, high face. I have other matters in hand. Let the horses walk themselves, and they will. <clears throat> au pair se a t h e the au pair se o deny organ no gorgon <clears throat> keep farther from me o thou illiterate and unlearned ostler snails what hast thou got there a book why thou canst not tell ne'er a word on it that thou shalt see presently, and keep out of the circle, I say, lest I send you into the Austri with the vengeance. That's like... faith? You had best leave your foolery, for an my master come, he'll conjure you, I faith. <laughs> my master, conjure me. I'll tell thee what, an my master come here. I'll clap as fair a pair of horns on his head, as e'er thou sawst in thy life. <laughs> thou needest not do that, for my mistress hath done it. <laughs> Aye. Uh, there be of us here that have waded as deep into matters as other men, if they were disposed to talk. A plague take you. I thought you did not speak up and down after her for nothing. But I prithee tell me, in good sadness, Robin, is that a conjuring book? Mm-hmm. And do but speak what thou'st have me to do, and I'll do it. <clears throat> if thou'st dance naked, put off thy clothes, and I'll conjure thee about presently. Or if thou'st go but to the tavern with me, I'll give thee white wine, red wine, claret wine, sack, muscadine, momsy, and whippin' crust. <laughs> hold, belly, hold. <laughs> And we'll not pay one penny for it. Oh, brave. Prithee, let's do it presently, for I am as dry as a dog. Come then, let's away.
When I behold the heavens, then I repent and curse thee, wicked Mephistopheles, because thou hast deprived me of these joys. Why, Faustus, thinkst thou that heaven is such a glorious thing? I tell thee, tis not half so fair as thou, or any man that breathes on earth. How provest thou that? It was made for man, therefore is man more excellent. If it were made for man, t'was made for me. I will renounce this magic and repent. Faustus, repent, yet God will pity thee. Thou art a spirit, God cannot pity thee. Who buzzes in my ears, I am a spirit? Be I a devil, yet God may pity me. Aye, God will pity me if I repent. Aye, but Faustus will never repent. My heart so hardened, I cannot repent. Scarce can I name salvation, faith, or heaven. The fearful echoes thunder in mine ears. Faustus, thou art damned. Then swords and knives, poisons, gun, halters, and envenomed steel are laid before me to dispatch myself. Had not sweet pleasure conquered deep despair? Have not I made blind Homer sing to me of Alexander's love and Hector's death? And hath not he that builds the walls of Thebes with ravishing sounds of his melodious harp made music with my Mephistopheles? Why should I die then, or basely despair? I am resolved. Faustus, Faustus shall, shall never, never repent. 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 Come, Mephistopheles, let us dispute again and argue of divine astrology. Tell me, are there many heavens above the moon? Are all celestial bodies but one globe, as in the substance of the centric earth? As are the elements, such are the spheres, mutually folded in each other's orb. And, Faustus, all jointly move upon one axle tree whose termin is termed the world's wide pole. Nor are the names of Saturn, Mars, or Jupiter feigned, but our erring stars. But tell me, have they all one motion, both in direction and time? All jointly move from east to west in four and twenty hours upon the poles of the world but differ in their motion upon the poles of the zodiac. Tush, these slender trifles Ragnar can decide. Hath Mephistopheles no greater skill? Who knows not the double motion of the planets? The first is finished in a natural day, the second thus is Saturn in 30 years, Jupiter in 12, Mars in 4, the Sun, Venus and Mercury in a year, and the Moon in 28 days. Tush, these are freshmen's suppositions. But tell me, hath every sphere a dominion or intelliger? Aye. How many heavens or spheres are there? Nine, the seven planets, the firmament, and the imperial heaven. Well, resolve me in this question. Why have we not conjunctions, oppositions, aspects, and eclipses all at one time? But in some year we have more, in some less. Per in aquilum, motum, respectu, tosius. <laughs> well, I am answered. Tell me who made the world. I will not. Sweet Mephistopheles, tell me. Move me not, for I will not tell thee. Villain, have I not bound thee to tell me anything? I that is not against our kingdom, but this is. Think thou on hell, Faustus, for thou art damned. Think, Faustus, upon God that made the world. Remember this. I go, a cursed spirit, to ugly hell. Tis thou that is damned to stress Faustus' soul. Is it not too, too late? Too late. Never too late, if Faustus can repent. If thou repent, devils shall tear thee in pieces. Repent, and they shall never raise thy skin. Ah, Christ my saviour, seek to save distressed Faustus' soul. Christ cannot save thy soul, for he is just. There is none but I have interest in the same. Oh, who art thou that looks so terrible? I am Lucifer, and this is my companion prince in hell. Faustus, they are come to fetch away thy soul. We come to tell thee that thou dost injure us. Thou talkest of Christ contrary to the promise. Thou shouldst not think of God, think of the devil, and of his dam too. And nor will I henceforth pardon me in this, and Faustus vows never to look to heaven, never to name God or to pray to him, to, to, to burn his scriptures, slay his ministers, and make my spirits pull his churches down. Do so, and we will highly gratify thee. Faustus, we are come from hell to show thee some pastime. Sit down, and thou shalt see all the seven deadly sins appear in their proper shapes. That sight will be pleasing unto me, as paradise was to Adam the first day of his creation. Talk not of paradise! 
nor creation. But mark this show. Talk of the devil and nothing else. Come away. Now, Faustus, examine them of their several names and dispositions. What up thou, the first? I am a pride. I disdain to have any parents. I am like to Ovid's flea. I can creep into every corner of a wench, sometimes like a periwig. I sit upon her brow, or like a fan of feathers I kiss her lips. Indeed I do. What do I not? But by what a scent is here. I will not speak another word, except the ground were perfumed and covered with the cloth of Aris. What up thou, the second? I am covetousness, begotten of an old cur in an old leathern bag. And might I have my wish, I would desire that this house and all the people in it would turn to gold, and that I might lock you up in my good chest. Oh, my sweet gold! What art thou, the third? I am wrath. I had neither father nor mother. I leaped out of a lion's mouth when I was scarce half an hour old. And ever since, I have run up and down the world with this case of rapiers, wounding myself when I had nobody to fight with. I was born in hell, and look to it, for some of you shall be my father. What art thou, the fourth? I am envy, begotten of a chimney sweeper and an oyster wife. I cannot read, and therefore wish all books were burnt. I am lean with seeing others eat. Oh, that there would come a famine through all the world, that all might die, and I live alone. Then thou wouldst see how fat I would be. But must thou sit and I stand? Come down with a vengeance. Away, envious rascal. What art thou, the fifth? Who? <coughs> <coughs> Hi, ma'am. I am gluttony. My parents are all dead, and the devil a penny they had left me but a bare pension. And that was thirty meals a day and ten feathers. A uh, small trife to suffice nature. Oh, I come from royal patronage. My grandfather was a gammon of bacon, and my grandmother was a hog's roast of... Clarent wine. By Godfather were these Peter Pickled Herring and Martin Martha's Beef. Oh, oh, but my godmother, oh, she was a jolly, gentle woman and well beloved in every town and city. Her name was Mistress Marjorie March Beer. Ah, oh, now, Faustus, thou hast heard my prodigy. Wilt thou bid me suffer? Bro, oh, I'll see thee hanged. Thou wilt eat up all my victuals. Oh, oh, then, then the devil choke thee. <laughs> the choke yourself, glutton. What art thou, the sixth? <laughs> I am sloth. <clears throat> I was begotten on a sunny bank where I have lain ever since and you have done me great injury to bring me from thence <sighs> let me be carried thither again by gluttony and lechery I'll not speak another word for a king's ransom what are you mistress minx the seventh and the last who? I, sir. I am the one that loves an inch of raw mutton, better than an L of fried stockfish. And the first letter of my name begins with lechery. Away! To hell! To hell! <laughs> Faustus, how dost thou like this? Oh, this feeds my soul. Tut tut, Faustus, in hell is all manner of delight. And might I see hell and return again? How happy were I then? Thou shalt. I shall send for thee at midnight. In meantime, take this book, who 
peruse it thoroughly, and thou shalt turn thyself into what shape thou wilt. Great thanks, mighty Lucifer. This will I keep as cherry as my life. Farewell, Faustus, and think on the devil. Farewell, great Lucifer. Come, Mephistopheles. Learned Faustus, to know the secrets of astronomy, graven in the book of Jove's high firmament, did mount herself to scale Olympus's top, being seated in a chariot burning bright, drawn by the strength of yoked dragons' necks. She now is gone to prove cosmography, and as I guess, will first arrive at Rome, to seek the Pope and manner of his court, and take some part of Holy Peter's feast, that to this day, is highly solemnized. Having now, my good Mephistopheles, passed with delight the stately town of Trier, environed round with airy mountain tops, with walls of flint and deep entrenched lakes, not to be won by any conquering prince. From Paris, next, coasting the realm of France, we saw the river Main fall into Rhine, whose banks are set up with groves of fruitful vines. Then, up to Naples, Rich Campania, whose buildings fair and gorgeous to the eye. The street straight forth and paved with finest brick, quarters of town in four equivalents. There, saw we learned Mary's golden tomb, the way he cut an English mile in length through a rock of stone in one night's space. From thence to Venice, Padua and the rest, in midst of which a sumptuous temple stands that threats the stars with her aspiring top. Thus hitherto has Faustus spent her time. But tell me now, what resting place is this? Hast thou, as else did command, conducted me within the walls of Rome? I have, and because we will not be unprovided, I have taken up his holiness's privy chamber for our use. <laughs> I hope his holiness bids us welcome. Tut, tis no matter. We'll be bold with his good cheer. And now, my Faustus, that thou mayst perceive what Rome containeth to delight thee with. Know that this city stands upon seven hills, that underprop the groundwork of the same, just through the midst runs flowing Tiber's stream with winding banks that cut it in two parts, over the which four stately bridges lean, that make safe passage to each part of Rome. Upon the bridge, called Ponte Angelo, erected is a castle passing strong within whose walls such store of ordnance are, and double cannons, framed of carved brass, as match the days within one complete year. Besides the gates and high pyramids which Julius Caesar brought from Africa. Now by the kingdoms of infernal rule, of Styx, Acheron, and the fiery lake of ever-burning Phlegathon, I swear that I do long to see the monuments and situations of blight-splendid Rome. Come, therefore, let's away. Nay, Faustus. Stay, I know you'd fain see the Pope, and take some part of Holy Peter's feast, where thou shalt see a troop of bald pate friars, whose highest good is in belly cheer. Well, I am content to compass them some sport, and by their folly make us merriment. Then charm me that I may be invisible, to do what I please and see of any whilst I stay in Rome. So... Faustus, now do what thou wilt, thou shalt not be discerned. My lord of Lorraine, wilt you please draw near? Fool too, and the devil choke you, and you spare. Ah? Uh -huh. How now, who's that that spake? Friars, look about. Here's nobody, if it is like your holiness. No. My lord, here is a dainty dish, sent to me by the Bishop of Milan. I thank you, sir. How now? Who's this that snatches the meat from me? Will no one look? My lord, this dish was sent to me from the Cardinal of Florence. 
Oh, you say true. I'll have it. What again? <laughs> My lord, um, I will drink to your grace. My lord, it may be some ghost newly crept out of a purgatory come to beg a pardon of your holiness. Uh, it may be so. Fries, prepare the dirge and lay the fury out for this ghost. Once again, my lord, full two. In nomine patrias. What? Are you crossing of yourself? Well, use that trick no more. I would advise you. In nomine patrias. Well, there's the second time. Aware the third, I give you fair warning. In nomine (laughs) patrias. Oh, come on, Mephistopheles, what shall we do? Ah, uh, nay, I know not. We shall be cursed with bell, book, and candle. Uh, how? Bell, book, and candle. Candle, book, and bell, forwards and backwards to curse Faustus to hell. Anon, you shall see a hog grunt, a calf bleat, and an arse bray, because it is St. Peter's holy day. Come, brethren, let's bow our business with good devotion. Curse be he that stole away his holiness's meat from the table. May the Lord curse him. Curse be he that struck his holiness and blow on the face. May the Lord curse him. Curse be he that took his holiness and blow on the pate. May the Lord curse him. Curse be he that this truth bet the holy dirge. May the Lord curse him. Curse be he that took away his holiness's wine. May the Lord curse him and all the saints. Amen. (laughs) Sirrah Robin, we were best. You looked that your devil can answer the stealing of his same sup, for the Vinter's girl follows us at hard heels. Tis no matter. Let her come, and she will follow us. I'll so conjure her, as she was never conjured in her life. I warrant her. Here, let me see the cup. It is. Yonder she comes. Now, Robin, now or never, show thy cunning. Oh, are you here? I'm glad I've found you. You're a couple of fine companions. Pray, where's the cup you stole from the tavern? (laughs) How, how? We steal a cup. Take heed what you say. We look not like cup stealers, I can tell you. (laughs) Never deny it, for I know you have it, and I'll search you. Uh, Search me? Uh, uh, I, uh, and spare not. Uh, Hold the cup, Duke. Come, come. (laughs) Search me. Uh, uh, Search me. Come on, Sarah. Let me search I, you. I, I do, now. do. <laughs> Hold the cup, Robin. I fear not your search, and we scorn to steal your cups, I can tell you. Uh, never outface me for the matter. For sure, the cup is between you two. Nay, there you lie. Tis beyond us both. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you! Oh, I fought towards your novary to take it away. Come, give it to me again. I, much. Uh, when can you tell? Uh, Dick, make me a circle and stand close at my back. And stir not for thy life. Uh, Vintner, you shall have your cup anon. Wait, so is this a brand new cup? Or is this a- Say nothing, Dick. <laughs> <clears throat> O oh, Per, say O oh, Demogorgon, Belcher, and Mephistopheles! <sighs> you princely legions of infernal rule, how am I vexed by these villains' charms? From Constantinople have they brought me now, only for pleasure of these damned slaves. <laughs> By our lady, sir, uh, you have had a shrewd journey of it. Uh, uh, will it please you to take a shoulder of mutton to supper, uh, and a tester in your purse, uh, 
and go back again. I, 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 um, I pray you heartily, sir, for we called you but in jest, I promise you. Hmm, well, to purge the rashness of this cursed deed, first, be thou turned to this ugly shape. For apish deeds transformed into an ape. Oh, pray, oh, pray. Oh, pray. No, I, I pray, sir, let me have the carrying of him about to show some tricks. And so thou shalt be thou transformed to a dog and to carry him upon thy back. Away, be gone. A dog. That's excellent. <laughs> let the maids look well to their porridge pots. For I'll into the kitchen presently. Come, Dick, come. <sighs> well, now with the flames of ever-burning fire, I'll wing myself, and forthwith fly amain unto my Faustus, to the great Turk's court. What the... When Faustus had with pleasure taken the view of rarest things and royal courts of kings, she stayed her course and so returned home, where such as bear her absence but with grief. I mean her friends and nearest companions did gratulate her safety with kind words, and in their conference of what befell, touching her journey through the world and air, they put forth questions of astrology, which Faustus answered with such learned skill as they admired and wondered at her wit. Now her fame spread forth in every land. Amongst the rest, the emperor is one, Carolus V, at whose palace now Faustus is feasted amongst his noblemen. What there she did in trial of her art, I leave untold. Your eyes shall see performed. What ho, officers, gentlemen, hie to the presence to attend the emperor. Good Frederick, see that the rooms be voided straight. His Majesty is coming to the hall. Go back and see the state in readiness. But where is Bruno, our elected Pope, that on fury's back came post from Rome? Will not his grace consort the Emperor? Oh yes, and with him comes the German conjurer, the learned Faustus, fame of Wittenberg, the wonder of the world for magic art. And she intends to show great Carolus the race of all his stout progenitors and bring in his presence of his majesty the royal shapes and warlike semblance of Alexander and his beauteous paramour. Where is Benvolio? Fast asleep, I warrant you. He took his ruse with stoops of Rhenish wine, so kindly yesternight to Bruno's health that all this day the sluggard keeps his bed. See, see, his windows open will call to him. What ho? Benvolio! Ugh, what a devil ail you two! Speak softly, sir, lest the devil hear you, for Faustus at the court is late arrived, and at her heels a thousand furies wait to accomplish whatsoever the doctor please. What of this? Come, leave thy chamber first, and thou shalt see. This conjurer performs such rare exploits before the Pope and the Royal Emperor, as never yet was seen in Germany. <sighs> Has the Pope not enough of conjuring yet? He was upon the devil's back late enough, and if he be so far in love with him, I would he post him back to Rome again. Ugh, speak, wilt thou come and see the sport? Not I. Wilt thou stand in thy window and see it then? Aye. And I fall not asleep in the meantime. The emperor is at hand, who comes to see what wonders by black spells may compass be. Well, go you, attend the emperor. I am content for this once to thrust my head out of a window, for they say, if a man be drunk overnight, the devil cannot hurt him in the morning. If, if that be true, I have a charm over my head that shall control him as well as the conjurer, I warrant you. Wonder of men, renowned magician, thrice learned Faustus, welcome to our court. This deed of thine in setting Bruno free from his or our professed enemy shall add more excellence until thine art 
than if by powerful necromantic spells thou couldst command the world's obedience. Forever be beloved of Carolus. And if this Bruno thou hast late redeemed in peace process of the triple diam, and sit in Peter's chair, despite of chance, thou shalt be famous through all Italy and honoured of the German emperor. These gracious words, most royal Carolus, shall make poor Faustus to her utmost power both love and serve the German emperor, and lay her life at holy Bruno's feet. For proof whereof, if so your grace be pleased, the doctor stands repaired by power of art to cast her magic charms, that shall pierce through the ebon gates of ever-burning hell, and hail the stubborn furies from their caves to compass whatsoever your grace commands. Blood. She speaks terribly. But for all that, I do not greatly believe her. She looks as like a conjurer as the Pope to a costume on it. <laughs> then, Faustus, as thou late didst promise us, we would behold that famous conqueror, Alexander the Great, and his paramours, in their true shape and state majestical, that we may wander at their excellence. Your Majesty shall see them presently. Mephistopheles away, and with a solemn noise of trumpets sound, present before this royal emperor great Alexander and his beauteous paramour. Faustus, I will. Well, Mistress Doctor, you and your devils come not away quickly. You shall have me asleep presently. Soon I can eat myself for anger. To think I have been such an ass all this while. To stand gaping after the devil's governor. And can see nothing. <laughs> I'll make you feel something anon if my art fail me not. My lord, I must forewarn your majesty. That when my spirits present the royal shapes of Alexander and his paramour. Your grace demands no question of the king. But in dumb silence let them come. And go. Be it as Faustus please, we are content. Aye, aye, and I am content too. And now bring Alexander and his paramour before the emperor. I'll be Acteon and turn myself into a stag. <laughs> and I'll play Diana and send you the horns presently. <laughs> My gracious lord, you do forget yourself. These are but shadows, not substantial. Oh, pardon me. My thoughts are so ravished with the sight of this renowned emperor that in mine arms I would have compassed him. But Faustus, since I may not speak of them, to satisfy my longing thoughts at full, let me this tell thee. I have heard it said that this fair lady, while she lived on earth, had on her neck a little wart or mole. How may I prove that saying to be true? Your Majesty may boldly go and see. <gasps> Faustus, I see it plain, and in this sight thou better pleasest me than if I gained another monarchy. Away, be gone. See, see, my gracious lord, what strange beast is yon that thrusts his head out at window? Oh, wondrous sight! See, Duke of Saxony, two spreading horns most strangely fastened upon the head of young Benvolio. What? Is he asleep or dead? He sleeps, my lord, but dreams not of his horns. This sport is excellent! <laughs> well, We'll call and wake him. What ho, Benvolio! Ugh, a plague upon you. Let me sleep a while. I blame thee not to sleep much, having such a head of thine own. <laughs> Look up, Benvolio. Tis the Emperor's call. The Emperor? Where? Oh, Zunes, my head! Why, how now, Sir Knight? What hanged by the horns? Oh, this is most horrible. Fie, fie, pull in your head for shame. Let not all the world wonder at you. Nay, and thy, thy horns hold. Tis no matter for thine head, for that's armed sufficiently. Zeus, doctor, is this your villainy? Oh, say not, sir. 
The doctor has no skill, no art, no cunning to present these laws or bring before this royal emperor the mighty monarch, warlike Alexander. If thou sister, do it, you are straight resolved in bold action shape to turn to a stag. And therefore, my lord, so please your majesty, I'll raise a kennel of hounds shall hunt and sow, so all his footmanship shall scarce prevail to keep his carcass from their bloody fangs. Ho, oh, Belimoth, Aragon, Astaroth. Hold, hold, soon she'll roll, raise up a kennel of devils, I think. Anon, good my lord, entreat from me. It's blood. I'll never be able to endure these torments. Then, good master doctor, let me entreat you to remove his horns, as he has done penance now sufficiently. My gracious lord, not so much for injury on me, as to delight your majesty with some mirth. Has Faustus justly requited this injurious knight, which being all I desire, I am content to remove his horns. Mephistopheles, transform him. And hereafter, sir, look, you speak well of scholars. Speak well of you? Blood and scholars should be such cuckold makers to clap horns of honest men's head of this order. I'll never trust a smooth faces and small roughs more. But I not be revenged for this, for I fear I may be a gaping oyster and, and drink nothing but salt water. Come, Faustus, whilst the emperor lives in recompense of this thine high desert, thou shalt command the state of Germany and live beloved of mighty Carolus. Nay, sweet Benvolio, let us sway our thoughts from this attempt against the conjurer. Away! You love me not to urge me thus. Shall I let slip such great an injury, when every servile groom jests at my wrongs, then their rustic gambles proudly say, Benvolio's head was graced with horns today! Oh, may these eyelids never close again, till with my sword I have that conjurer slain! If you will aid me in this enterprise, then draw your weapons and be resolute. If not, depart. Here will Benvolio die, but Faustus's death shall quit my infamy. Nay, we will stay with thee, betide what may, and kill that doctor if she come this way. Then, gentle Frederick, hie thee to the grove and place our servants and our followers close in an ambush there behind the trees. By this, I know... The conjurer is near. I saw her kneel and kiss the emperor's hand and take her leave, laden with rich rewards. Then, soldiers, boldly fight. If Faustus die, take you the wealth, leave us the victory. Come, soldiers, follow me unto the grove. Who kills her shall have gold and endless love. My head is lighter than it was by the horns. But yet my heart more ponderous than my head, and pants until I see that conjurer dead. Where shall we place ourselves, Benvolio? Here we will stay to bide the first assault. Oh, with that damned hellhound but in place, thou soon should see me quit my foul disgrace. Close, close. The conjurer is at hand, and all alone comes walking in her gown. Be ready, then, and strike the peasant down. Mine be that honour then. Now, sword, strike home. For horns she gave, I'll have her head anon. See, see, she comes. No words. This blow ends all. Hell take her soul. Her body must thus fall. Ah! Groan you, Master Doctor. Break may her heart with groans. Dear Frederick, see thus I will end her griefs immediately. Strike with a willing hand. Her head is off. The devil's dead. The Furies may now laugh. Was this that stern aspect, that awful frown, made the grim monarch of infernal spirits tremble and quake at her commanding charms? Was this that damned head whose heart conspired Benvolio's shame before the emperor? Ay, that's the head, and here the body lies, justly rewarded for her villainousness. 
Come, let's devise how we may add more shame to the black scandal of her hated name. Hmm. First on her head, in quittance of my wrongs, I'll nail huge forked horns and let them hang within the window where she yoked me first, so that all the world may see my just revenge. Ahem. <clears throat> Zunes, the devil's alive again! Oh, give her a head, for God's sakes! Nay, keep it. Faustus will have head and hands, eh, all your hearts to recompense this deed. Knew you not, traitors. I was limited for four and twenty years to breathe on earth. And had you cut my body with your sores, or hewed this flesh and bones as small as sand, yet in a minute had my spirit returned, and I had breathed a man made free from harm. But wherefore do I dally my revenge? Astaroth, Belimoth, Mephistopheles... Go horse these traitors on your fiery backs, and mount aloft with them as high as heaven, then pitch them headlong to the lowest hell. Yet stay, the world shall see their misery. Go, Belamoff, and take this Catilaf hence, and hurl him in some lake of mud or dirt, and take thou this other, drag him through the woods amongst the prickling thorns and sharp as briars, whilst with my gentle Mephistopheles... This traitor flies unto some steepy rock that rolling down may break the villain's bones as he intended to dismember me. Fly hence, dispatch my charge immediately. Pity us, gentle Faustus. Save our lives. Away. She must needs go that the devil drives. Come, sirs, prepare yourselves in readiness. Make haste to help these noble gentlemen. I heard them parley with the conjurer. See where she comes, dispatch and kill the slave. What's here, an ambush to betray my life? Then Faustus, try thy skill, base peasant stand, for lo, these trees remove at my command, and stand as bulwarks twixt yourself and me, to shield me from your hateful treachery. Yet to encounter this your weak attempt, behold, an army comes incontinent. <laughs> What, Frederick? Ho! Oh, help me. Gentle friend, where is Martino? Dear Frederick, here, half smothered in a lake of mud and dirt, through which the Furies dragged me by the heels. Martino, see Benvolio's horns again. Oh, misery! How now, Benvolio? Defend me, heaven. Shall I be haunted still? Nay, fear not, man. We have no power to kill. My friends, transformed thus, O oh, hellish sprite! Your heads are all set with horns! You hit it right. It is your own, you mean. Feel it on your head. Zunes! <laughs> horns again! Nay, chafe not, man. We are all sped. What devil attends this damn magician? That spite of spite our wrongs are doubled. <laughs> what may we do that we may hide our shames? <laughs> If we should follow him to work revenge, he'd join long ass's ears to these huge horns and make us laughing stock to the entire world. What shall we do then, dear Benvolio? I, I have a castle joining near these woods, and thither we'll repair and live obscure. And till time shall on this our, our brutish shapes, Sith black disgrace, and thus eclipsed our fame. We'll rather die with grief than live with shame. I beseech your worship, accept of these forty dollars. Friend, thou hast not buy so good a horse for so small a price. I have no great need to sell him, but if thou likest him for ten dollars more, Take him, because I see thou hast a good mind to him. I beseech you, ma'am, except of this. I'm a very poor man and have lost very much by late of horse flesh. By this bargain will set me up again. Well, I will not stand with thee. Give me the money. Now, sir, I must tell you that you may ride him over hedge and ditch and spare him not. But do you hear me? In any case, ride him not into the water. How, sir? Not into the water? 
Why? Will he not drink of all waters? Yes, he will drink of all waters, but ride him not into the water. Over hedge and ditch, wherever thou will, but not into the water. Go bid the other ostler deliver him to, unto you, and remember what I say. I warrant you, sir. Oh, joyful day! Now I'm a made man forever. What art thou, Faustus? But a woman condemned to die. Thy fatal time draws to a final end. Despair doth drive disgust into my thoughts. Confound these passions with a quiet sleep. Tush, Christ to call the thief upon the cross. Then rest thee, Faustus, quiet in conceit. Oh, what a cozening doctor was this. I, riding my horse into the water, thinking some hidden mystery had been in the horse. I had nothing under me but a little straw. I had much ado to escape drowning. Well, I'll go rouse her and make her give me my forty dollars again. Ho, Sir Doctor, you cozening scab. Mistress Doctor, awake and rise and give me my money again. Your horse has turned into a bottle of hay. Mistress Doctor! <gasps> Alas! I'm undone. What shall I do? I have pulled off her leg. Oh, help, help! The villain hath murdered me! Murder? Not murder. <gasps> but she has one leg. I'll outrun her and, and cast this leg into some ditch or the other. Oh, stop him! Stop him! <laughs> oh, Faustus hath her leg again, and the horse costs her a bundle of hay for his $40. <laughs> oh, oh! how now, Wagner, and what news of thee? If it please you, the Duke of Van Holt doth earnestly entreat your company, and hath sent some of his men to attend you, with provision fit for your journey. Oh, the Duke of Van Holt's an honourable gentleman, one whom I must be cunning. Come, away. Come, my masters, I'll bring you to the best beer in Europe. What ho, hostess, where be these whores? How now? What lack you? What, my old guests? Welcome. Sirrah, Dick, dost thou know why I stand so mute? No, Robin. Why is it? <sighs> I am eighteen pence on the score, but say nothing. See if she hath forgotten me. Oh, who's this that stands so suddenly by himself? What, my old guest? Shit. <laughs> oh, hostess, how do you? <laughs> I hope my score stands still. Aye, there's no doubt of that. For me thinks you make no haste to wipe it out. <sighs> my hostess, I say, fetch us some beer. You shall presently. Look, up into the hall, there, ho. Come, sirs. What shall we do now till mine hostess comes? Marry, sir. I'll tell you the bravest tale how a conjurer served me. You know Dr. Fausta? I, a plague taker. Here's someone else for of course to know her. Did she conjure thee too? I'll tell you how she served me. As I was going to Wittenberg the other day with a load of hay, she met me and asked me what she should give me for as much hay as she could eat. Now, sir, I, thinking that a little would serve her turn, bade her take as much as she would for three farthings. So, presently, she gave me the money and fell to eating. And as I'm a christened man, she never left eating till she had ate up my whole load of hay. Oh, monstrous! Eat it's a whole, whole load of load hay? Of hay? Yes, oh, yes, that may be, uh, for I have heard of one that has eight load of logs. Now, sirs, you shall hear how villainously she served me. I went to her yesterday to buy a horse of her, and she would by no means sell him under forty dollars. So, sir, because I knew him to be such a horse as would run over hedge and ditch and, and never tire, I gave her her money. 
So when I had my horse, Dr. Fausta bade me ride him into the night and day, spare him no time. But, she quoth me, in any case ride him not into the water. Now, sir, I thinking the horse had some quality that she would not have me know of. But what did I do but ride into the great river, and when she came in the midst, my horse vanished away, and I sat straddling upon a bottle of hay. Oh, oh brave, brave. Doctor. doctor! But you shall hear how bravely I served her for it. I went me home to her house and found her there asleep. I kept her hallowing and whooping in her ears, but all I could not wake her. I seen that, pulled her by the leg, never was rested pulling till I had pulled me her leg quite off. Now, tis at my home upon my mantelpiece. And has the doctor but one leg then? That's excellent. For one of her devils turned me into the likeness of a dog's face. <laughs> <laughs> Some more drink, hostess. Hark you. We'll into another room and drink a while. And then we'll go out and see the doctor. Thanks, Master Doctor, for these pleasant sights. Nor know I how sufficiently to recompense your great deserts in erecting that enchanted castle in the air, the sight whereof so delighted me as nothing in the world could please me more. I do think myself, my good lord, highly recompensed, and that it pleases your grace to think but well of that which Faustus hath performed. But, gracious lady, it may be that you have not taken no pleasure in these sights. Therefore I pray you tell me. What is the thing you most desire to have? Be it in the world, it shall be yours. I have heard that great belly women do long for things are rare and dainty. True, Mistress Doctor, and since I find you so kind, I will make known unto you what my heart desires to have. And were it now summer, as it is January, a dead time of the winter, I would request no better meat than a dish of ripe grapes. Oh, this is but a small matter. Go, Mephistopheles, away. Madame, I will do more than this for your content. Here now, taste ye these grapes. They should be good, for they have come from a far country, I can tell you. Hmm. This makes me wonder more than all the rest, that at this time of the year, when every tree is barren of his fruit, from whence you have these ripe grapes. Please it, your grace, the year is divided into two circles over the whole world, so that when it is winter with us in the contrary circle, it is likewise summer with them, as in India, Saba, and such countries that lie far east, where they have fruit twice a year. From whence, by means of a swift spirit that I have, I had these grapes bought as you see. And trust me, they are the sweetest grapes that ever I tasted. Hello. Oi! 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 Oi. Oi. Oh, Where's Faustus? No. Oi! What fruit disturbers have we at the gate? Go, pacify their fury, set it up, and then demand of them what they would have. Why, how now, masters? What a coil is that? What is the reason you disturb the duke? We have no reason for it. Therefore, a fig for her. Why, saucy violets? Dare you be so bold? I hope, sir, we have wit enough to be more bold than welcome. It appears so. Pray be bold elsewhere, and trouble not the Duke. What would they have? They'll cry out to speak to Dr. Faustus. Aye, and we will speak with her. Will you, sir? Commit the rascals. Quick, commit with us. He were as good commit with his father as commit with us. Oh, I do beseech your grace. Let them come in. They're a good subject for a merriment. Hmm. Do as thou wilt, Faustus. I give thee leave. I thank your grace. 
Why, how now, my good friends? Faith, you are too outrageous, but come near. I've procured your pardons. Welcome all. Nay, madam, <laughs> we will be welcome for our money, and we will pay for what we take. Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, give us half a dozen of beer here, yeah? and, and be hanged. Nay, hark you. Can you tell me where you are? I, Mary, can I? Uh, we are under heaven. I, but sir, saw Spox. Know you in what place? I, I. The house. Is good enough to drink in. Zoons, fill us some beer, or we'll break all the barrels in the house and dash out your brains with the bottles. Oh, be not so furious, come, you shall have beer. And my lord, beseech you give me leave a while. I'll gauge my credit, it will content your grace. With all my heart, kind doctor, please thyself, our servants and our courts at thy command. Oh, I humbly thank your grace. Then fetch some beer. Aye, marry. There's spake a doctor indeed, and faith I'll drink a health to thy wooden leg for that word. My wooden leg? What dost thou mean by that? <laughs> Doss hear her, Dick. She has forgotten her leg. Aye, aye. <laughs> she does not stand much upon that. <laughs> no faith. Not much upon a wooden leg. Good lord, that flesh and blood should be so frail with your worship. Do not you remember a horse course who you sold a horse to? Oh, yes, I remember I sold one, a horse. And do you remember you bid he should not ride into the water? Yes, I do remember that. And do you remember nothing of your leg? No, in good sooth. Well, then I pray you remember your courtesy. I thank you, sir. It is not so much worth. I pray you tell me one thing. And what's that? Be both your legs bedfellows every night together. Well, thou's most a colossus of me that thou asking me such a question. Oh, no, no, truly, madam, I would make nothing of you, but I would fain know that. Then I assure thee, certainly, they are. Oh, I thank you. I am fully satisfied. But wherefore dost thou ask? Oh, for nothing, madam, but methinks you should have a wooden bedfellow of one of them. Why do you hear, ma'am? Did I not pull off one of your legs while you were asleep? But I have it again now, I am awake. Look you here, sir. Oh, oh horrible. horrible. Have the doctor three, three legs? legs? Do you remember, madam, how you cousined me and ate up my loaf of... <laughs> Do you remember how you made me wear an apron? <laughs> you whore, conjuring scab. Do you remember how you cozened me with a horse? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've forgotten me. <laughs> You think to carry it away with your hay-pass and re -pass. Do you remember the dog's family? Who pays for the ale? Hear you, Mistress Doctor. Now you've sent away my guests. I pray, who shall pay me for my ale? Mm -mm -mm -mm. My lord, we are much beholden to this learned woman. So are we, madam? which we will recompense with all the love and kindness that we may. Her artful sport drives all sad thoughts away. I think my mistress means to die shortly. She has made her will and given me her wealth, her house, her goods and store of golden plate besides two thousand ducats ready coined. I wonder what she means. If death were nigh, she would not frolic thus. She's now at supper with the scholars, where there's such belly cheer as Wagner in his life never saw the like. And see where they come, belike the feast is done. Mistress Dr. Faustus, since our conference about fair ladies, and which was the beautifulest in all the world, we have determined with ourselves that Helen of Greece was the admirablest lady that ever lived. Therefore, Mistress Doctor, if you will do us so much favour as to let us see that peerless dame of Greece, whom all the world admires for majesty, we should think ourselves much beholding unto you. For that I know your friendship is unfined. It is not Faustus' custom to deny the just request of those that wish her well. 
You shall behold the peerless dame of Greece, no otherwise for pomp or majesty than when Sir Paris crossed the seas with her and brought the spoils to rich Dardinia. Be silent, then, for danger is in words. Was this fair Helen, whose admired worth made Greece with ten years' war afflict poor Troy? Too simple is my wit to tell her worth, whom all the world admires for majesty. Now we have seen the pride of nature's work, we'll take our leaves, and for this blessed sight, happy and blessed be Faustus evermore. Ladies, farewell, the same wish I to you. Oh, gentle Faustus, leave this damned art, this music that will charm thy soul to hell, and quite bereave thee of salvation. Though thou hast now offended like a man, do not preserve it in like a devil. Yet, yet thou hast an amiable soul. If sin by custom grow not into nature, then Faustus will repentance come too late. Then thou art banished from the sight of heaven. No mortal can express the pains of hell. It may be this, my exhortation, seems harsh and all unpleasant. Let it not, for gentle child, I speak it not in wrath or envy of thee, but in tender love, and pity of thy future misery. And so have hope, that this my kind rebuke, checking thy body, may amend thy soul. Where art thou, Faustus? Wretch, what hast thou done? Hell claims his right, and with a roaring voice says, Faustus, come, thine hour is almost come, and Faustus now will come to do thee right. Oh, stay, good Faustus, stay thy desperate steps. I see an angel. Hover over thy head, and with a vial full of precious grace, offers to pour the same into thy soul, then call for mercy and avoid despair. O friend, I feel thy words to comfort my distressed soul. Leave me a while to ponder on my sins. Faustus, I leave thee, but with the grief of heart, fearing the enemy of thy hapless soul. Accursed Faustus! Wretch, what hast thou done? I do repent, and yet I do despair. Hell strives with grace for conquest in my breast. What shall I do to shun the snares of death? Thou traitor, Faustus! I arrest thy soul for disobedience to my sovereign lord. Revolt, or I'll in piecemeal tear thy flesh. O oh, sweet Mephistopheles, entreat thy lord to pardon my unjust presumption, and with my blood again I will confirm my former vow I made to Lucifer. Do it then quickly, with unfeigned heart, lest greater danger do attend thy drift. Oh, torment, sweet friend, that base and crooked age that does dissuade me from thy Lucifer, with the greatest torments that our hell affords. Her faith is great, I cannot touch her soul. But what I may afflict her body with, I will attempt, which is but a little worth. Oh, one thing, good servant, let me crave of thee, to glut the longing of my heart's desire, that I might have unto my paramour that heavenly Helen which I saw of late, whose sweet embracings may extinguish clean these thoughts that do dissuade me from my vow, and keep mine oath I made to Lucifer. Faustus, this or what else thou shalt desire shall be performed in twinkling of an eye. Was this the face that launched a thousand ships, and burnt the topless towers of Elium? Sweet Helen, make me immortal. You suck forth my soul, see where it flies. Come, Helen, come, give me my soul again. Here will I dwell, for heaven be here, and all is dross that is not earth. I will be Paris, and for love of thee, instead of Troy, shall Wittenberg be sacked. And I will come back with sweet Menelaus, and wear thy colours on my plumed crest. Yes, I will wound Achilles in the heel. Come, Helen, come. Give me my soul again.
us from internal dis do we ascend, to view the subjects of our monarchy, those souls which sin seals the black sons of hell, the mole which is chief Faustus, we come to thee, bringing with us lasting damnation, to wait upon thy soul, the time is come which makes it forfeit. And this gloomy night, here in this room will wretched Faustus be. And here will stay, to mock her how she doth demean herself. How should she, but in desperate lunacy? Oh, fond wordling, now her heart-blood dries with grief. Her conscience kills it, and her labouring brain begets a world of idle fantasies to overreach the devil. But all in vain, her store of pleasures must be sourced with pain. She and her servant, Wagner, are at hand, both come from drawing Faustus' latest will. <laughs> See where they come. Say, Wagner, thou hast perused my will. How dost thou like it? Madam, so wondrous well, as in all humble duty, I do yield my life and lasting service for your love. Thank you, Wagner. Welcome, friends. Now, worthy Faustus, methinks your looks are changed. Oh, friends. What ails Faustus? Ha! <laughs> My sweet chamber fellow, had I lived with thee, then I had lived still. But now must die eternally. Oh, look, sirs, comes he not, comes he not? Oh, my dear Faustus, what imports this fear? Is, is all our pleasure turned to melancholy? She is not well with being over solitary. If it be so, we'll have physicians, and Faustus shall be cured. Tis but a surfeit, sir. Fear nothing. A surfeit of deadly sin? That has damned both body and soul. Yet, Faustus, look up to heaven. Remember, God's mercies are infinite. But Faustus' offences can never be pardoned. The serpent that tempted Eve may be saved. But not Faustus. Our friends, hear me with patience and tremble not on my speeches. Though my heart pants and quivers to remember that I have been a student here these thirty years. Oh, would I have never seen Wittenberg. Never read book. And what wonders I have done, all Wittenberg can witness, yeah, all the world, for which Faustus hath lost both Germany and the world. Yeah, heaven itself, heaven, the seat of God, the throne of the blessed, the kingdom of joy, and must remain in hell forever. Hell, oh, hell forever. Sweet friends, what shall become of Faustus being in hell forever? Yet Faustus, call on God! On God, whom Faustus have abjured! On God, who Faustus has blasphemed! Oh my God, I would weep, but the devil draws in my tears, gush forth blood instead of tears, yet yeah, life and soul. Now oh, he stays my tongue. I would lift up my hands, but see, they hold them, they hold them! Who, Faustus? Lucifer and Mephistopheles. Our friends, I gave them my soul for my cunning. God forbid. God forbade it indeed, but Faustus hath done it. For the vain pleasure of four and twenty years hath Faustus lost eternal joy and felicity. I writ them a bill with mine own blood. The date is expired, the time will come, and he will fetch me. Why did not Faustus tell us of this before, that divines might have prayed for thee? Oft I have thought to have done so, but the devil threatened to tear me in pieces if I named God, to fetch both body and soul if I once gave ear to divinity. And now it is too late. Dear friends, away, lest you perish with me. Oh, what may we do to save Faustus? Talk not of me, but save yourselves and depart. God will strengthen me. I will stay with Faustus. Tempt not God, sweet friend, but let us into the next room and pray for her. Aye, pray for me. Pray for me. At what noise whatsoever you hear, Come not unto me, for nothing can rescue me. Pray thou, and we will pray, that God may have mercy on thee. Farewell. If I live till morning, I'll visit you. If not, Faustus has gone to hell. 
Faustus farewell. Faustus farewell. Oh, I, Faustus, and now thou hast no hope of heaven, therefore despair, think only upon hell, for that must be thy mansion there to dwell. O oh, thou bewitching fiend, so as thy temptation hath robbed me of eternal happiness. I do confess it, Faustus, and rejoice. "'Twas I that when thou wert in the way to heaven damned up thy passage. "'When thou tookst the book to view the scriptures, "'then I turned the leaves and led thine eye. "'Or oh, what? Weepest thou? "'Tis too late. "'Despair. Farewell. "'Fools that will laugh on earth must weep in hell.'" Oh, Faustus. If thou hast given ear to me, innumerable journeys had followed thee, but thou didst love thy world. Gave ear to me, and now must taste hell's pains perpetually. Oh, what will all thy riches, pleasures, pomps avail thee now? Nothing but vex thee more to want on hell that had on earth such store. Ah, oh, thou hast lost celestial happiness. Pleasures unspeakable, bliss without end. Hast thou affected sweet divinity, hell or the devil had had no power on thee? Hast thou kept on that way, Faustus, behold, in what resplendent glory thou hast sat in yonder throne, like those bright shining saints, and triumphed over hell? That hast thou lost, and now, poor soul, must thy good angel lead thee, the jaws of hell are open to receive thee. Now, Faustus, let thine eyes with horror stare into that vast perpetual torture house. There are the furies tossing damned souls on burning forks. There, bodies boiled and led. There are live quarters broiling on the coals that ne'er can die. This ever-burning chair is for o'er-tortured souls to rest them in. These that are fed with sops of flaming fire were gluttons and loved only delicates, and laughed to see the poor starve at their gates. But yet all these are nothing. Thou shalt see ten thousand tortures that more horrid be. Oh, I have seen enough to torture me. Nay, thou must feel them taste the smart of all. She that loves pleasure must for pleasure fall. And so I leave thee, Faustus, till anon. Then wilt thou tumble in confusion. O oh, Faustus, now thou hast but one bare hour to live, and then thou must be damned perpetually. Stand still, you ever-moving spheres of heaven. The time may cease, and midnight never come. For nature's eyes, rise. Rise again, and make perpetual day, or let this hour be but a year. A month, a week, or a natural day, that Faustus may repent, repent. and save her soul. Run slowly, slowly, horses of the night. The stars move still, time runs, the clock will strike, the devil will come, and Faustus must be damned. I will leap up to my God, who pulls me down? One drop of blood will save me. Oh my Christ, I'll rend not my heart for naming of my Christ. Christ cannot save thyself. Yet will I call on him? <laughs> Spare me, Lucifer. Where is it now? It is gone. And see a threatening arm, an angry brow, mountains and hill, come, come and fall on me and hide me from the heavy wrath of heaven. No? Then will I headlong run into the earth, gape earth? Oh no. It will not harbour me. 
You stars that reigned in my nativity, whose influence and the lot of death and hell now draw up Faustus like a foggy mist into the entrails of yon labouring cloud. That when you vomit forth into the air, my limbs may issue from your smoky mouths. But let my soul mount and ascend to heaven. Oh, half the hour is past. This will all be past and none. Oh, if my soul must suffer for my sin, impose some end to my incessant pain. Let Faustus live in hell a thousand years, a hundred thousand, and at last be saved. No end is limited to damned souls. Why wert thou a creature wanting soul? Or why is it immortal that thou hast? Ah, Pythagoras is in metempsychosis. Were that true, this soul should fly from me and I be changed into some brutish beast. All beasts are happy. For when they die, their souls are soon dissolved in elements. But mine must still live still to be plagued in hell. Cursed be the parents that engendered me. No, Faustus, curse myself. No, curse Lucifer, that's the priority of the joys of heaven. Gentlemen, let us go visit Faustus, for such a dreadful night was never seen since first the world's creation did begin. Such dreadful shrieks and cries were never heard. Pray heaven the doctor have escaped the danger. Oh, hope us heaven! See, here are Faustus's limbs, all torn asunder by the hand of death. The devils whom Faustus served have torn her thus. Betwixt the hours of twelve and one, methought I heard her shriek and call aloud for help, at which self-time the house seemed all on fire, with dreadful horror of these damned fiends. Well, gentlemen, though Faustus's end be such as every Christian heart laments to think on, yet, for she was a scholar, once admired for wondrous knowledge in our German schools, We'll give her mangled limbs due burial, and all the students, clothed in mourning black, shall wait upon her heavy funeral. Cut is the branch that might have grown full straight, and burned. Is Apollo's laurel bough that sometime grew within this learned woman. Faustus is gone. Regard her hellish fall, whose fiendful fortune may exhort the wise only to wonder at unlawful things, whose deepness doth entice such forward wits to practice more than heavenly power permits. That was Loughborough Students' Union Shakespeare Society's production of Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe. It starred Sophie Jane Collins as Faustus, Harry Nichols as Wagner, and Jack Smith as Mephistopheles. Other roles were filled by an ensemble consisting of Kaustab Krishna, Josh Stidder, Alex Lewis, Kira Gochen, River Humphreys Europe, Rory Blessington, Zoe Wright, Eve Newton, Bethan Rumsey, and Neve Lawler. Other notable roles include Kaustab Krishnan and Josh Stidder as Robin and Dick, Kira Gochen and River Humphreys Jura as Good and Evil Angel, and Alex Lewis as Lucifer. 
This radio play was produced by Jessica Norris and directed by Casper Wart and Paul Thompson. It was edited by Paul Thompson with sound effects courtesy of BBC, Orange Sounds and Mixed Kit. We hope that you have enjoyed the show.